put my hand up in the air, I want you guys to say, say what? Let's try it. Say what? A little louder. Say what? With some attitude. Say what? That's what I'm talking about. Say what? Say what? are probably like, what was that? Was that tap dancing or one time I heard the hip hop version of Irish River Dancing? <laughs> no, that was called stepping or stomping. And stepping is a rhythmic type of dance where you use your body as an instrument. But before stepping, it was called gumboot dancing. Now you're like, well, what's gumboot dancing? Well, gumboot dancing started in South Africa after the apartheid laws passed, and South African men were forced to work in gold mines. And in the mines, the conditions were terrible. It was dark and strict, the workers were chained to their areas, and worst of all, it would flood. So instead of finding a way or just draining the water, the foremen were like, eh, let's just give them some rubber boots. And eventually, the men found a way to create their own language and form of communication by stomping their feet, rattling the chains on their ankles. But you guys are like, so they just randomly started talking to each other and going, that means come here. You there. <laughs> but that's one of the complex things about Africa. A lot of the countries have their own tribes within it. Like me, I'm from Sudan. But in Sudan, there's over 300 tribes. And each tribe has their own culture music, food, and especially language. Because the official language in Sudan is Arabic, but not everybody can speak it. Some people grow up learning Arabic and their tribal language, but most people only know their tribal language. And tribes are formed through territory, power, or even characteristics. So it's very common to find many different tribes all through Africa. So at the end of the apartheid, the, the gumboot dancers took what they created, brought it to their families, and eventually it spread all through South Africa, creating this huge form of expressive art. And with stepping, that started in the early 1900s from historical African-American sororities and fraternities who practiced rituals through sound and music. But what fascinated me the most was stepping wasn't just entertaining. It was an identity. Because the gumbu dancers, they didn't really have anything to represent their culture. They wore overalls, helmet, their boots. And the African Americans, they weren't even seen as people because race was such a huge issue. 
So it was amazing to me how stepping and gumboot dancing wasn't just what they did, but it's who they are as people. And that's the same thing I noticed with me and my friends when we started our little step team in the neighborhood. I mean, we had fun, but it was that powerful feeling that we got when we danced. And it was able to, and we were able to grab everyone's attention. And when we danced, you knew it was us. <laughs> but my personal favorite way to use step and rhythm is through music. And that's what I love so much about rhythm because it's versatile. You can use it in any different way and with anything. You just have to be creative. Because you know when you love a song and you're jamming out to it and you know exactly what beat comes next or how the rhythm goes and you just kind of do it on your own like, boom, 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 yeah. That's what I love. <laughs> <laughs> but I put my own twist into it. So I'm gonna need you guys to help me. I'm gonna do a simple step, simple. And I want you guys to jump in. And when I put my hands forward, that means stop. I'm gonna do a different move and I want you guys to join as well. Let's try it. You're settled down that you found a girl and you're married now. I heard that your dreams came true. Guess she gave you things I couldn't give to you. Old friend, why are you so shy? Ain't like you to hold back. Or hide from the light. I hate to turn up out of the blue, uninvited, but I couldn't stay away. I couldn't fight it. I'd hope you see my face and that you'd be reminded that for me it isn't over. Never mind, I'll find someone like you. I wish nothing but the best for you. Don't forget me, I bet. Remember, you said sometimes it lasts in love, and sometimes it hurts instead. Sometimes it lasts in love, but sometimes it hurts instead. Thank you guys for being good participants. So I want to wrap this up with a little poem I call Noticing the Beat. Hey friend, why do you tap your pencil in a steady beat when you're bored in class? Mom, why do you cross your hands and tap your leg in a steady beat when you're frustrated? Sis, why do you tap your watch in a steady beat when you're running late? Rhythm is something we're always creating but don't notice. From the stomp, clap, tap, snap, it doesn't stop. And yet, we still don't notice. And why? Well, here's my theory. Thanks for asking. <laughs> we were born with it. We have a beat so strong, it's what keeps us present. The first sound we ever made was a beat. And it was that beat that let our mothers know we were alive. And if you don't know what beat I'm talking about, take your hand and put it right here. Do you hear it? Do you feel it? We started with a beat and we're gonna end with a beat, this beat, our heart. Thank you. <laughs>